sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When my wife Gwen and I first moved to Rancho Marietta, we uh, took Hit 99 as we were coming from the Bay Area, and we took Dillard, which takes you to Rancho, and halfway along the road on the left-hand side, there's a huge sign painted red with white lettering, and it looks like the lettering you find on a Coca-Cola can. The first time I went by it, I thought, oh, we just passed a sign that said Coca-Cola. <laughs> the second time I went by it, I read it a little more carefully, and it said, Christ saves. And then the tagline underneath was, he never leaves you thirsty. <laughs> Pretty clever. That is really what is at the heart of this gospel this morning from St. Mark. It closes a section of scripture that began actually back in the chapter 8 of the same gospel. Back in chapter 8, if you remember, Jesus healed another blind man. He had to spit twice in this ritual of healing into the mud or into the ground and make mud, smear it on the man's eyes, and the man saw. From there, we reach the climax of the section of the Gospel of Mark with another story of Jesus' healing a blind man. And this time, a blind beggar. And sandwiched in between these two healing stories, we travel with Jesus and his disciples on about an 85-mile journey from the region of Galilee to the holy city of Jerusalem. And just outside of the city of Capernaum, Jesus teaches the crowds about divorce. He encounters a rich young ruler who's told by Jesus how difficult it is for the wealthy to enter heaven. And as they travel towards Jerusalem, Jesus reminds the disciples that he's going to be arrested and beaten and killed once they enter the holy city. And if you remember, along the way, James and John, even though they've heard of what Jesus is facing, James and John, as we heard last week, asked Jesus for a special favor. And Jesus uses this opportunity to explain to James and John, as well as the other disciples, that those who want to be great, like James and John, must become servants of all. And after a short 45 verses, we find that we've traveled from Capernaum to Jericho, which is just 10, 12 miles from Jerusalem. And this is where we pick up the story of the blind beggar, Bartimaeus, who's referred to by Mark as the son of Timaeus, who's begging on the side of the road. One little important fact that I think is interesting to keep in mind is that the issue of begging was not a topic discussed in Jewish law. There is no word for beggar in the Old Testament. It doesn't exist. And the reason why Jewish law didn't deal with the issue of begging is that if everyone took care of each other the way the law instructed, 
there wouldn't be any need for anybody to beg. Now that's living in a perfect world. And yet, here we have in the story of Mark this beggar. Mark provides us with a clue that this blind beggar knows something that the disciples seem to constantly forget. He knows, and we don't know how, but he knows who Jesus really is. He knows somehow that Jesus has the authority and the power to heal. And you'll notice Bartimaeus, he doesn't want pity. He doesn't want a handout. He just wants to be showered with God's grace of healing. Others, like the rich young ruler, wanted eternal life. James and John wanted glory for themselves. And this blind beggar, he only wants to be healed. He doesn't even specify at first what specific healing he desires until Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? And he answers, let me see again. Oddly enough, and this is what I love about Mark, the only thing that stands between Bartimaeus and Jesus' healing power are, guess who? The disciples. Now, just think about that for a moment. The disciples, Jesus' closest followers, are the ones who want to silence Bartimaeus. Somebody who just wants to be healed. They tell him to be quiet. The very people who are closest to Jesus want to keep others away from Jesus. Now, if you were writing this story in modern times, we could characterize the disciples as good church people. None of you in here. I'm, you're, you're all good church people, but I'm not talking about you. But if you were writing this story now, you, you'd characterize them that way, just trying to keep the riffraff out. They don't want Jesus being bothered by a noisy, disruptive beggar. But mostly, they don't want to lose their own spot near Jesus. They figure if we invite one in, then one's got to be out. But Jesus has a solution. This is brilliant. And I guess that's normal because he's the son of God, so. <laughs> I didn't need to say it's brilliant because we all know it is. But he has a solution for this. He's got this crowd of disciples around him. He has this other crowd that's curious about him, around him. Outside of the crowd is Bartimaeus. You see the symbolism? And what does Jesus do? He stops. And he stands still in the midst of the crowd around him. And he looks beyond the crowd and says, call him, Bartimaeus, over here. And that changes, interestingly enough, the disciples' attempts to keep Bartimaeus quiet. All of a sudden, they act as if they care. So Jesus' actions remind the disciples that following Jesus means making room for someone who was and is seen as an outsider. Jesus reminds them and us through this story that following him means making room for someone who is an outsider to become an insider. And Mark does a great job in describing this scene in just a few short verses. He tells us when Bartimaeus realizes Jesus is calling him, Mark says that Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and he hurries in Jesus' direction. And then Jesus 
put the question to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? What is striking about this question is that it's the same question he asked of James and John. And in the case of James and John, what do they do? They pull Jesus aside so the other disciples aren't going to hear their conversation. But Bartimaeus cries out as loud as possible. He doesn't care how loud he is or who hears him. Bartimaeus completely submits himself to Jesus' authority. He wants to see again because he knows what he's missing and who is the only person that can help him to see again. The disciples were blind to God's kingdom and it begs our reflection as a church to ask ourselves in what ways are we blind to God's kingdom? How do our ideas of who belongs, our preconceptions of who belongs in church and who does not prevent us from seeing the Bartimaeuses around us, those in this community, our surrounding area, who are on the margins, those who want to experience God's mercy and healing. Sometimes we are blind to that. And when we offer help to those in need, don't offer a surface solution because it does them and you no good. Or just maybe enough to help make us feel better. A minister by the name of Walt, who I read this, uh, looked at this and saw this years ago, but he, he heads up a ministry called Seedbed. But he wrote something about this that applies very well. He said, we must press into the deeper need of the other. This is not easy. It gets messy. It means taking on the mind and mentality of Jesus who teaches us that we come not to be served, but to serve. But you have to remember that we serve not in order to feel good, but in order so that we can share our experience of Jesus with others. And in order to do this, it's important we improve our vision and begin to look at the marginalized and the less fortunate and those who don't believe as we do or live lives like us or look or speak like us and begin to see those people through the eyes of Jesus. We must be ready when called by Jesus to say, Lord, let me see in a new way. Let me see people as you see them. And in the eighth chapter of St. Mark, Jesus, if you remember, again, as I said, spits twice into the mud, rubs it on a blind man's eyes, and he's healed. But with Bartimaeus, Jesus doesn't even have to touch him. He just says to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has made you well. And you've heard that in other parts of the gospel stories. Jesus has encounters where he tells those that he's healed, go, your faith has made you well, and what do those people do? They go. But what is different about the encounter with Bartimaeus is that he doesn't go. Instead, we're told he becomes a follower of Jesus. Bartimaeus goes from sitting on the side of the road to following Jesus on the road. And that road, of course, is going to lead Jesus to the cross. And in their effort to maintain their position close to Jesus, the disciples tried to put up a wall to keep others away from Jesus. But Jesus always welcomes one more who desires to be fundamentally changed. 
He never turns anybody away. The position of honor is not as James and John would have you believe from the last, last week's gospel. That is on Christ's left or right. What, Mark's, what Mark is trying to get across is that the position of honor for those who follow Jesus is at the foot of the cross. The disciples as human beings wanted to protect their place near Jesus, but Jesus always has his arms open to those who want to follow him. Always has his arms open to those who put their trust in him. All of us have to always ask ourselves this question in light of the gospel. What is keeping you and I from welcoming others to join us at the foot of the cross? When we let go of our need to be first, then and only then can we truly be a servant of all. 